Welcome. This is the second a global meeting for Smart Settle. I am so excited because today Ernie, the founder, Ernie, is going to show us not only a PowerPoint about what Smart Settle is, but he's going to do a simulation. You know, I am one of the fans of Smart Settle. Um, he is just one of the people who, with his background, president of ICANN Systems, developer of the Smart Settle e-negotiation system. Dr. Thiessen is responsible for the direction and management of the company, as well as its government, industry, and community affairs. He has led ICANN's research and developmental efforts to implement the ICANN's patent, creating the world's first secure, multi-party national support system on the internet. Dr. Thiessen also directs the International E-Negotiation Exhibit and was a lecturer in 2010 for UNESCO IHE Negotiation and Mediation for Water Conflict Management, very important. Dr. Thiessen has been a guest speaker at many of the annual international forums on online dispute resolution since they began in 2002 and is on, is on the editorial board of the first international journal dedicated to ODR and the International Journal of Online Dispute Resolution. You know, online dispute resolution just may be something we've all been waiting for. I know I have. We would like to have Ernest give us a little smart settle program. And as I haven't said 22 times, it's smart settle, which is a, a new way to realize we can become peaceful with each other. And then I'm going to be here I'm Barbara Gon Mueller. I'd like you each just to say your name. Let's go around so we know the participants. Okay, Helen. I'm Helen Peacock from Ontario, Canada. Ernst. Ernest Thiessen. I guess you'll get to know me later. Barbara. I'm Barbara and I work with Ernie. Thank you, David. David Wick. I'm in Ashland, Oregon. Richard. Uh, Richard Denton. Uh, Retired country doctor in Northern Ontario, Canada. And a very active man. Dennis? Uh, Dennis Wong, intern, peace builder. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Eric Smiling, Peter Metz. I haven't seen you in a while. Nice to see you, Peter. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I'm Peter Metz uh, in Needham, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston, and active with Massachusetts Peace Action and Pox Christie. Excellent. Eric? Hello, my name is Eric Robbins, a member of Kiev uh, Multinational Rotary Club, and I've been very connected with many, uh, with some of Ernest's prayer work with the Smart Settle, and Dennis as an intern. I, I, I like that comment. It's just very funny, but okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll leave it there. Brenda? Pleasure to be here. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Brenda? Brenda Newman, Winnipeg, Canada, Rotarian with World Peace Partners Are you in related? District 54. That Am I, I related to anybody? I, bless your heart. You're a lucky woman. Okay, I don't know how to cuss her. A case in the bottom two. You tell me who you are, please. Councilor Ahmed, the Rotary and uh, uh, Rotary Club of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And next to you, Sergey. Um, my name is Sergey. I work with Orange. Where are you from, Sergey? Um, Canada. But nice. originally from Russia. I hear a little accent. It sounded like somebody I knew. And yeah. Sandy, but last but not least. Sandy, can't hear you. So, Sandy Hendon, I'm about 40 miles east of the United Nations on Long Island. And I'm working with uh, Wiseocracy. And I, we just started a Middle East Forum for Sustainable Peace with Smart Settle. Wow. And I'm Barbara Gon Mueller, and I am so delighted you're all here. I have peacepodcast.org, and many of you are have been guests on there. And if you ever get down in the dumps and you need a little peace motivation, just go to peacepodcast.org and listen to some of the illustrious speakers. I should say conversations, because I've had Helen, Dennis, and so many of you on, Sandy. And it, it, when I get down in the dumps, which isn't too often, I just go to Peace Podcast and just click. And there is David Wick, and he gives me so much inspiration. Brian Berman's on. I mean, you just can't believe 120 of our Peace Fellows 
on the planet. Peace, sisters and fellows and brothers. Okay, with that, Ernst, you would like to give us a little uh, PowerPoint first. So let's start with you today, and I'll put you on speaker view so we can really see what you're bringing us. And welcome, everybody. Okay, that's great. And um, let's see, I just want to hear uh, hello from John German, too, before I begin. Ooh, thank you. John, please. Am I unmuted? Yes, sir. Okay, you know, it's uh, John Chairman that put people and projects together at the United Nations for many decades. You know, and I have been working intensively 24 seven with Ernest Thiessen you know, to get his method and tool you know, to its fullest expression in the world as quickly and as surely as possible. That's my life's mission. Thank you. And um, I really appreciate you, John, because you keep me informed about what Dennis Wong is doing, and now you're keeping me informed about what Ernest is doing. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you, and thank you. Um, all right, we're going back to Ernst. Ernest, please. All right, so I have uh, a PowerPoint that I am going to start with, and then I'm gonna follow that up with a short sim simulation, um, imagining that we are uh, negotiating and renewing the Black Sea Grain Initiative using the Smart Settle Infinity Collaboration System. But let's uh, start, first of all, with this uh, short PowerPoint as an introduction. And I'm going to now share my screen. And um, pick uh, this screen here, and hopefully uh, you can all see uh, where I've got this PowerPoint, and we're just going to make this full screen now. And it should say on your screen now, Black Sea Green Prisoners. So that's a, a, a short title where we're imagining that we're not only renewing the Black Sea Green Initiative, but we're also negotiating a prisoner swap. And, but really, this is something about much bigger. And that's why we're calling it a strategic start, a place to start to accomplish something a lot bigger. And in this presentation, I want to actually start with that something bigger, and then we're going to end up with a simulation of the Black Sea Grain Prisoners, we're calling it. So this is all about waging peace. You know that adjective, waging, is supposed to give you the idea that this we're, not, we're serious about this. And we want to pursue peace with the same intensity that some people wage war. Uh, our vision from the beginning is conflict resolution in a more peaceful, collaborative, and intelligent way. The short version is better peace sooner. Well, that's easy to say, and I hope that you have a, a better idea of what that actually means and how we can achieve it by the end of this presentation. You know, this world is full of wars. It's been full of wars for a long time, and more recently, uh, there have been uh, some pretty serious wars that have started. Ukraine versus Russia has been there for more than a year. And if that wasn't bad enough, now the Middle East has erupted. And there are many more, maybe a hundred other very significant wars. And all of these things add up to a very dangerous world that we're living in right now. And so, the and uh, one of the biggest dangers is what might happen with nuclear weapons. And I'd like to propose that, you know, if we could stop the wars and get a negotiation going about that, we can add the issues of getting rid of nuclear weapons. And I just hope that you keep that in your mind, how we, you can imagine how that can be done. So let me focus a little bit on that war in Ukraine. 
it's been called by Russia a special military op uh, operation. And if you ask different people, they'll they have different opinions of how this might end. And some people will say, well, it ends over here on this side where you, Ukraine wins. And no, other people will say, no, it ends over here where Russia wins. But really, there is no win in this kind of a situation. It's lose-lose, no matter. With all of that death and destruction, this is, we're looking at lose-lose. And probably, perhaps the more likely option is where this ends up in a stalemate. And I'm calling this a one-dimensional distributive stalemate because that's the way people look at these wars and these struggles. It's a tug of war. And it's just one dimension that you go this way or you go that way. And it's actually a very dangerous Nash equilibrium. So I'm referring to what John Nash got a Nobel Prize for describing the Nash equilibrium. He said <clears throat> that in situations like this, parties are stuck at a place where they cannot escape. And he called it the Nash equilibrium. In this case, it's a very dangerous place. And what he said, he also wrote another paper where he prescribed a way to escape the Nash equilibrium. And in this paper, he described an algorithm called maximize the utility product. In order to uh, actually implement his algorithm, we have to reorient these scales so that we're looking at the problem in multi-dimensional satisfaction space. So we're transforming this conflict for resolution. Now, it's, it's not necessarily uh, true that one party has to lose when another party gains. Now, Russia wants to be at the top left, Ukraine wants to be at the bottom right, and it's possible for them to get to a place at the top right where uh, they get better than what they would have otherwise in a one-dimensional uh, tug of war. So in my research, uh, my major professor at Harvard, at, at Cornell University gave me a challenge and uh, he actually gave me the same problem to solve that to John Nash solved and we had no idea that, uh, that John Nash had worked on this, but I came up with another algorithm called Maximize Minimum Gain. Uh, Harvard professor uh, Rafa, Howard Rafa, actually published an opinion that he preferred my algorithm to John Nash. And so that's the one that we've implemented in Smart Subtle Infinity. I've spent the last three decades in research and development. And it's really a methodology called integrative negotiation, where parties take advantage of uh, their differing preferences in order to uh, find a solution that's more satisfactory than what they might achieve otherwise. Now, John Nash said there was a second ingredient to escaping the Nash equilibrium, and that was collaboration. Well, that's not so easy to achieve. And we, my team and I realized that, uh, that uh, this wasn't going to be very easy. And we actually added more algorithms. And now we have a suite of, of nine algorithms implemented at the Smart Settle Infinity neutral site. And these algorithms all work together to encourage collaboration. We say that Infinity actually has the ability to convert adversaries into collaborators. And here we're depicting a worldwide negotiation where the countries of the world are grouped into five different groups. 
and they're all being assisted in a negotiation at the Smart Subtle Infinity neutral site. It starts with wise mediators and artificial intelligence that helps create this single negotiating framework. It gets modeled within the Smart Subtle Infinity neutral site, and uh, they eventually achieve a peace treaty if they can agree. So if we imagine how this process starts, we ask the parties for their uh, optimistic proposals. So Putin had a peace plan in 2014, and Zelensky had a 10-point peace plan in November of 2022. The smart settle process says, let's take both of those and combine them together. And not only those two, if there's any more, well, there was one from China as well, we can add that one to the mix. And there are actually many others. And we take all of that and create what we call a single negotiating framework. So it now represents what the aspirations of all of the parties. And it's like the final agreement, except there are blanks for the issues to be negotiated. And those blanks then are modeled within Smart Subtle Infinity. Smart Subtle Infinity collaboration process starts with the modeling phase where you define the issues and the negotiating ranges. You're building that single negotiating framework together and, and you're modeling that framework within the Infinity uh, system. And then the, the, the parties separately model their own preferences and uh, focus on what makes them satisfied. And you get this single negotiating framework, a very well-defined problem. John Dewey said, a well-defined problem is already half solved. In our experience, you're actually even uh, better than half solved. So then the next phase is the solution phase where the parties build packages, exchange proposals, generate suggestions, accept packages, reach a baseline and generate an improvement. Their facilitators help them in a virtual negotiation room and where we have these nine algorithms that are make this environment neutral, trustworthy, safe, secure, smart, negotiating, uh, complex, formal uh, situations anywhere, anytime. And their objective is the best attainable out outcome that's satisfactory to all parties. They gather around this virtual negotiating table. Their preferences are represented well, and their packages have secret ratings that only they see. And they focus on those. And the system then helps them exchange proposals and generate suggestions. There's a special type of uh, suggestion called a masquerade. We're going to demonstrate that in the simulation. And this uh, process is called multivariate visual blind bidding. So here, let's just review the process. Uh, this is for two parties. Russia wants to be at the top left. Ukraine wants to be at the bottom right. And they describe a minimum level of satisfaction that they need to achieve. And that's defined by the status quo. This intersection is, is that dangerous Nash equilibrium that we referred to earlier. And our objective is to help these parties escape that Nash equilibrium and get to a place at the top right. So there's an area there that's bounded by the efficiency frontier, and we're going to try to get <laughs> close to that uh, frontier as we can. That's the zone of possible agreement. And there's actually a smaller zone defined by their targets called the zone of likely agreement. So once they have that defined, then they start by exchanging optimistic proposals. Well, these two proposals that we see right here 
neither of them are acceptable to the other party, but you could ask the smart settled system to generate suggestions. And some of these suggestions will fall in that zone of likely agreement. And if some of those are accepted by both or all parties, one of them will become the baseline. And then we apply that signature algorithm, maximize the minimum gain to get to the efficiency frontier, a fair and efficient solution. So I've depicted how this works for two parties, but it actually works for any number of parties. Here we have three parties where the efficiency frontier is a surface. It's a lot more complicated under the, under the hood, but each individual party, to each individual party, it's hardly any more complicated. What they see in their interface looks uh, very little different and uh, they just have to focus on their own preferences and smart settle manages all of the rest. So at the end, that package that they all agree to gets plugged into the, the single negotiating framework and then you have a final agreement. We're gonna call this a peace treaty in this case. So we're gonna give you a short simulation of how this could be applied to the Black Sea Grain Initiative and combined with a prisoner swap. In this case, there are four parties, Ukraine, Russia, Turkey, and the United Nations. These four parties actually negotiated the original Black Sea Grain Initiative, and we're just imagining these same four parties will negotiate a uh, new agreement. And and they will not only solve the impasse over the grain shipments, but they'll also swap prisoners. So here's the situation in the Black Sea. There's they they used to go right straight through the the Black Sea, and now they're taking that uh, route on the left side with the with the yellow dots. It's not uh, you know a total solution, but it's less dangerous. And it still is a dangerous thing. And uh, it would be good if they could actually get back to the way they were before. So in this fictional scenario, this is made up and we're just imagining uh, different issues here for this simulation that Russia will cooperate with Ukraine and other countries to demine the Black Sea and we have to agree, you know, which is Russia's responsibility and which will be the other uh, country's responsibilities, how much humanitarian aid will be provided by the UN, how much provided by Russia. And Russia Bank reconnected to SWIFT is really the sticking point that's preventing the uh, grain initiative to be reinitiated. And they just uh, can't come to some agreement about that. And we're imagining also that they agree to uh, do something about the pollution in the Black Sea. Uh, and they're, like I said, we're going to try to uh, release Ukrainian pr prisoners, Russian prisoners. And, oh, there's another issue that's come along. It's the Polish truckers. These have been in the, in the news recently and uh, they're, causing some trouble at the at the border. They say, you know, all of these grain shipments by truckers coming out of Ukraine are taking their work away. Well, we could solve that with some uh, financial assistance. And finally, we need a dispute resolution mechanism so that this agreement that they come to actually sticks and is long lasting. So I'm going to switch to that simulation shortly, but first of all, I just want to remind you that our objective is, is waging peace and our vision is here. And uh, Barbara Muller said, we're going to try to promote this at the United Nations. So let's see if we can get the United Nations on board. So now let's switch to that simulation.
So now you should be seeing the smart subtle infinity interface. And this is the private point of view of Russia. We're assuming a negotiation with uh, Russia, no, sorry, with, with Ukraine and the United Nations and Turkey. And this is Russia's private point of view. None of the other parties see this view. The other parties are going to be played by a robot in this simulation. We've got three robots that are playing each one of the other parties. So we're just going to focus the entire time on what Russia sees. So here you've, you've seen all of these issues, and each of these issues have a number beside it, which is the importance of the issue. So the area that Russia will demine, will demine is given 10 points. Here, the Russia bank reconnected to SWIFT is given nine points. It's a lot more important than this first issue. And let's see what that issue looks like. I'm going to double click on that and open up the satisfaction graph and see what that looks like. OK, there are three options here, either reconnect the agricultural bank or what the UN said, no, let's just reconnect a subsidiary to that bank. But for some reason, Russia doesn't like that very much. And in this depiction here, like they're giving that option 20 points while the agricultural bank gets, gets 90 points compared to zero if nothing happens at all. And Russia can adjust the height of the bars here, put it higher or lower, and we just leave it where, where it was. And I'm going to close this. And let's look at uh, prisoners. So open that up. So the number of prisoners to be released is a continuously valued issue. And here it shows how. Russia becomes satisfied on the number of prisoners. So the number is anywhere between zero and a thousand. And they are mostly satisfied if about half of these prisoners get swapped in a release. And maybe some of these prisoners are, are actually future prisoners in this negotiation. And they've assigned 60 points to this issue. Okay. So we're not going to look at all of these at this point, but uh, I just remind you that the way this is oriented is that Russia prefers all of these values here on the right side, and their least preferred outcome on each one of these issues are on the left-hand side. So they want to be at the right side of this graph. And here we've got a number of packages, private packages, and the, at the top right is an area that's really the negotiating table. There's nothing on the table yet. When we start negotiating, packages will appear here on the table. But for the moment, we've got private packages that only Russia sees. And here's their status quo package. This is what would happen if we don't come to any agreement at all and they've given this 60 points. So they definitely have to get more than 60 points, but actually they want to get at least 320 points. They don't want, like they want to be better than the status quo. So this is their resistance point, this yellow package. You can see that the issues are uh, generally on the right side of uh, the screen here. That's where they want to be. Uh, they want to get better than this resistance if possible uh, achieve this target package. But they're going to start with an optimistic package. Now, this is even more to the right. This package is worth 416 points. Um, very optimistic. And we're going to start the negotiation here with this optimistic package. And this package is now going to appear on the table up here at the top right. It should appear here momentarily 
the robot is going to propose optimistic packages from all of the other parties. And we're going to see all uh, proposals from all four packages. And here they are all displayed together. And they're all different from each other. How are they going to come to a consensus where they all want different things? Well, you can see that each one of these packages have a rating. Ukraine's proposal is worth 231 points. Well, it's better than the status quo, but it's less than their resistance. In fact, it's less than their target, less than Russia's target. So in fact, even this proposal from Turkey is less than the target. It's less than the resistance. So Russia says, no, I'm not interested in any one of those proposals. Let's ask Smart Settle for a suggestion. So now Smart Settle is going to generate a suggestion. It's looking at how all of the parties become satisfied. Can we find something that satisfies everybody? So it takes a little while. While you're, oh, here we do. Here we got something. We got some, some suggestions here. Let's not look at all of those right now, but just look at this package number five. It's worth 366 points. Well, look at that. It's better than our target. Looking pretty good. Let's accept package number five. I'm going to say yes to that. And when we accept that package number five, a yellow dot appears here beside the package. Now that, you know, it's on the table here, but it's, it's a secret acceptance. None of the other parties see that we, that Russia has accepted package number five and the other parties see all these packages too. And they have an opportunity to actually accept or reject these packages. And if they accept the package on their screen, a yellow dot appears. And at the neutral site, Smart Settle will compare everybody's view. And if everybody has ac accepted the same package, we'll have a deal. Let's end session one and see if we've got a deal. So the Smart Settle process proceeds in sessions. At the end of every session, the parties are asked to end the session and, and to see if everybody has accepted the same package. So in this case, there's no deal. Apparently, maybe some of the parties accepted package five, but not all, so we don't have a deal. Now in session two, let's make a concession. We're gonna propose our concession package. And our concession package, when we propose it, is going to appear here on the table together with the other packages. And you will see that the other parties also make concessions. So here we have uh, the concession from Russia. This is the one that we just put on the table. It's not quite as good as our earlier optimistic. And here we have a concession from Turkey. It's actually worse than their first proposal. Uh, and we have a concession from Ukraine and a concession from the UN. And these concessions are actually, none of them are as good as our resistance package. So we're not gonna accept any of those but let's see, maybe we can accept, um, well, this one here, package seven looks not too bad, it's, but it's better than our resistance point, but not as good as our target. Let's put our target on the table, but we're not going to propose it. We're gonna suggest it in anon anonymously. And this is what's called a masquerade in the smart settle process. It's masquerading as a proposal from Russia, but it really looks like a suggestion to everybody else. And it appears here as package number seven, we're going to accept, no, that's not true, it's package, 
uh, number 13. We're going to accept package number 13. And let's hope now that everybody, we thought long and hard about that target package. And we think the other parties will all like that. We meaning Russia. And let's end session two and see if we've got a deal now. No deal yet in session two, but now we're in session session three. Well, what are we going to do? Well, let's see. Maybe maybe we could accept package number seven. Not as good as our target, better than our resistance point. Uh, we'd still be quite happy with that. We do want to have a deal in this negotiation. So uh, let's uh, see if we accept that. Oh, hmm, there's another package that's uh, appeared here. Package 14, we're 349 points. That's better than our target. Well, let's accept that. That looks pretty good. And now let's end session three and see if we get a deal now. End session three. Now, we've accepted basically everything that's on the table that's better than our resistance point, and we're, we're, we're pretty satisfied. We have now got to deal the uh, package seven, 323, has become a baseline agreement. And before we announce this to the world, we're going to ask Smart Settle if there's any value left on the table and uh, see if we can get closer to that efficiency frontier. Remember what I showed you before that when uh, the parties reach a baseline, it's possible that they're not quite at that efficiency frontier and we can then apply that algorithm, maximize the minimum gain and see if we can find something better. And look at this. We have found something that's better than the baseline. And often when we do this with groups of people, uh, you know, we have uh, a group here playing Russia, a group playing Ukraine, another group playing the, playing the United Nations, another one playing Turkey, you know, they, what they're all experiencing is something better than what they agreed to. And they're still in this mindset, you know, this win-lose mindset where they think that if they get something better, the other parties have to get something worse. But that's not what happens here in the smart settle process. Something better for one party is better for all of them. And that's what happened in this case if... Russia looks at package number 15, which gained them a whole lot more points. We went from 23, from 323 to 368, and that would be like 45 points better. That's worth like more than many of these issues, half as much as their most important issue. That's a very significant gain that Smart Settle has. Uh, proposed to all of these, and if you if we would look at the other parties, we'd see that they would gain similarly to all of the others. We'll accept that. I've simulated this before, and I know that the other parties will also accept this package. And we've got a new deal here, this improvement package 15 that we can now announce to the world. So. There you have it. Um, and I know that that was uh, really done quickly. And uh, if you'd like a review, go back to that video that we proposed as, as a prerequisite for watching <laughs> this presentation. And 
uh, it will be a very good uh, uh, explanation in more detail than I've shown you today. So with that, I'm going to stop my sharing and see if there's any ex uh, any questions here, turn it back over to Barbara to uh, uh, facilitate uh, the rest of the meeting. You know, it's interesting to watch this. Um, it seems like so doable. And I guess, that, uh, Peter, you have a question. Let's start with you. Hmm. Um, I love this. Um, Ernest, thank you very much for demonstrating it. And great, great work. Now, it seems to me that one key ingredient in this is getting all the parties to put ratings on the elements of the solution. Um, Am I am I right? That's the that's the first step is sure. for them to label to to define the elements of the solution that they want, and then to put importance ratings. I would call them on yeah. each of those. Is that right? You're absolutely right, and it's critical. We can't achieve this unless we actually know what the party preferences are. In normal negotiations that happen without uh, a system like this, you know, a mediator might you know, go back and forth between the parties and try to get this information out, but they never they never get it right. And the parties don't want to divulge that to anybody that's, you know, not squarely on their side. But if the parties trust, and that's really, really important, if they trust this system, if they trust that neutral site, then they can divulge their preferences to that neutral site. And that neutral site then will be able to find something that is satisfactory to all of them. But you're right, Peter, that this is very critical. And we, and before we do this for real, we will have to have very skilled facilitators that are working with each one of the parties. Uh, I can't imagine, and usually this doesn't happen, that the leaders themselves get into this interface and know how to do this. They're not going to learn how to do it. but they're going to have people that work with them, skilled facilitators uh, that learn this backwards and forwards and will be helping them to uh, get their preferences right. Trust and neutrality seems like it's important. David Wick? Um, obviously in all the conflicts and, and looking to solutions, the trust is the, is the essence, is the key to to moving forward, how how do would you see bringing people along to be able to trust this process that they you know know there's no monkey business you know <laughs> in the back end um, to really be able to put themselves on the line for this? Yeah. Yes, uh, and uh, so let's let's emphasize that that's very critical. These parties are not going to collaborate in this process unless they trust it. And uh, so but we're, we're imagining that we're going to put the, the neutral site right now, the one we have is in Canada. And Russia probably won't like that too much. Like Canada is really not on their side. I mean, we'd like to be on everybody's side here in Canada as, as peacemakers, uh, but uh, we would relocate that neutral site in Turkey. That probably would help. And you know, maybe Turkey has a secure place and uh, and we're also going to let these parties practice th with this and uh, get their best people to investigate and test it to make sure it's secure, do simulations. Uh, they have to get totally comfortable with it and say this is trustworthy uh, before they're going to use it. And We've never done this on a scale like this before, but we have to try it. Thank you. Um, is there anybody who has a detailed question they would like to ask? And then I'm gonna let Ernest uh, kind of tell us what he thinks is the next step. Okay, Ernest, what's our next step then? Well, you know, I, uh, presented the Black Sea Grain Initiative, and it's hard enough as it is, and I said, well, okay, let's see if we can do a prisoner swap at the same time. Does that make it harder? No, it makes it easier, because it just provides an additional incentive to actually get something done. 
Um, and it, you know, the way negotiations normally happen, um, you know, every issue, new issue you add makes the whole thing harder. But with Smart Subtle Infinity, exactly the opposite. The more issues you add, the easier it gets because you're adding additional opportunities for finding a solution. Yeah, you're right, Peter. It's it's we're we're, we're tr trading preferences because you know, and uh, this you know, good mediators they they that's what they do. They try to do this, but it's really really a tough thing to do without a powerful system like Smart Subtle Infinity that can keep track of everything. That's so, really important, keeping track of everything. Yeah. Um, I've been in negotiations and with mediators, very well trained, but oh my God, it just slows down the system because they, you know, we're all in our own rooms and even though it's on Zoom, we're all having to wait till the mediator tells them what's going on. This seems to eliminate an awful lot of the time waste. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of next steps, uh, my team is chomping on the bit and we would like to get into this. You know, uh, we're doing other things right now. We have to keep bread on the table, but if we got a little bit of funding, uh, we would stop what we're doing right now. This is really important, but we, we do need to keep the lights on over here and keep bread on the table for everybody that's working for me. Uh, but it wouldn't take much if we can uh, raise a little bit of money, we'll switch to this and we just start working on this. Our first uh, objective would be to try to create a realistic simulation. We need that in order to promote this idea to others that are close to the decision makers. We're gonna go through a number of iterations as we get closer and closer to the real decision makers. So we can't just jump right in. That we're not, we can't go walk in their door and say, would you like to do this? They'll say, well, what, what is this? And, and what track record do you have? Well, none, okay, well, go, go away, right? Uh, um, so we, we have to prove and it's gonna be uh, a process. And so we've actually shown how to do that in other situations. The, the video that I gave you for, for homework, uh, we worked for a year uh, uh, pro producing that as a proof of concept, we can do this in a much shorter time with the Black Sea Grain Initiative. So uh, if any of you have any ideas where to raise a little bit of money, we'll get started. So when um, Helen, um, taking Richard's place, when he goes to, uh, when oh, Helen, I was just gonna talk about you, your turn, Helen. Um, well, on that topic, um, I didn't realize that John was going to be right there in New York, and this is his life's work. So, John, I follow your lead in terms of what I can be doing or not doing while I'm in New York. My question was, um, it occurs to me, instead of creating another simulation or more realistic simulation, or what about finding an existing conflict, a small conflict, uh, I don't know, between school districts or... Um, how to use the water in the Colorado River or something that's a little bit more, um, less international and actually using this, getting the players on each side to participate in this real um, a negotiation. Mm -hmm. To me, that would, be, that would be more powerful than creating another simulation. <laughs> okay. Uh... Just uh, introduce me to those decision makers and we'll do it. I really, that was the same idea I had last time, that we have to have something that's actually real, smaller, and yet the, and the outcome is really important to the parties involved. And so I think our homework is to find something in this uh, a smaller setting that would benefit from Smart Settle. And there are many conflicts out there that are just waiting for solutions. And if we could find one, and like, I don't know, there's so many that we could bring some clarity to your process so that people would understand. So here's Helen and many people like John going to be in New York, trying to avoid a nuclear disaster. And they're gonna be wearing the Smart Settle um, badges. And people are gonna say, 
oh, that's interesting, smart settle. And I know it's a negotiation tool, a well-defined problem always is easier to solve. So what does she say when somebody says, well, what is smart settle? Um, yeah, are, are you asking me? I'm just asking. I'm just asking, right? Talking. Okay. Okay, well, um, you know, watch uh, some of those videos and be prepared. Um, I, uh, you know, uh, uh, John, uh, when you, when he got uh, introduced, uh, he, he gave me a good plug. I, I'd like to uh, see if John has some comments. Uh, and he always has some very good observations, things I may have missed in my presentation. Uh, you know, he uh, actually privately uh, just gave me a little bit of a hint. He said, uh, let's let's uh, give some kind of an indication of how much that solution that we showed is worth, how many billion dollars is it worth more than that uh, baseline that we had. These, they, we're delivering a lot of benefits and it, it's true. Um, you know, I didn't want to, uh, you know, I think it was obvious that that of all, all the benefits that we're delivering. John, uh, what have you got to, uh, any comments on this, so what we've uh, seen and what we're discussing? Yes, uh, thank you. So yeah, the, the question about uh, how much of an improvement was there from the baseline, I think is uh, uh, crucial for people to understand you know, what are the stakes here of using this? Uh, how much better can you get than what the parties have already agreed to, the baseline? You know, if, if they understand what that is and how you measure it and some other simulations that we've done, you, know, uh, you can measure it in billions of dollars. Uh, I don't know whether that works in this simulation. That's why I asked the question to Ernest in the, in the private chat. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the other thing is the, the, it's a great, the great demo. It, uh, I think it uh, explained it very well. Uh, and you know, the question about finding other you know, you know, smaller problems you know, to you know, get you know, some agreement from you know, uh, people other than us, you know, that this is a good thing to do. Uh, it's a great idea, you know, but in order to run those you know, simulations, it's gonna take some funding to do it. You know, so you know, the question would be not just finding you know, another problem to you know, demonstrate you know, in real life you know, or in simulation, you know, but how does that work get funded? You know, does it get funded by the people who want that problem solved? You know, that sounds like it's asking a lot. You know, take something they're not familiar with and put money you know, to, to do it. You know, I think it's probably more likely that somebody who's, who's convinced that this works you know, would, you know, would fund it for, to solve somebody else's problem because we need their problem in order to get this proof of concept that would persuade you know, uh, somebody you know, on a bigger problem like the Black Sea Grain Initiative or a prisoner swap uh, to do that. You know, so one of the things that uh, uh, I have you know, pulled together you know, in order to you know, go in the direction of you know, doing something you know, in the real world you know, is a set of letters you know, to you know, the uh, parties for the Black Sea Grain Initiative uh, to say, we've done simulations, we see very promising results, uh, and in order to you know, offer that to you as a way to get to a solution to this problem, uh, it would help to have better information because it, you know, the, uh, uh, the uh, information that we use, of course, doesn't benefit from your closeness to the real problem, your involvement in the real problem. So. Uh, if you'd like us to uh, be able to present you something you know, that um, is closer to the real world, you know, uh, uh, is there somebody who can tell us better information so we could tune up what the issues are, you know, what the various outcomes are, and what all those weights and preferences are? The closer we can get to that, you know, the closer we are to a real world solution. So I have those letters ready. 
No, I have not sent them to the ambassadors of uh, the countries involved or to you know, Secretary General Guterres you know, for the UN, you know, because I think you know, it, it, you know, it would be you know, you know, presumptuous of you know, me to go ahead and do that. You know, I think it would be better you know, for some group you know, to say this you know, than for some you know, random person like me to, you know, to say it. You know, so you know, if there is a group that thinks that this is a good idea, you know, I can send everybody a copy of these letters. You can look at them and see whether you think that they're you know, appropriate. And, you know, and then somebody could uh, send it to them and say, look, if we have better information, you know, we could tune this up and see whether the tremendous gains you know, that this uh, the simulation we just did you know, now you know, shows, whether they hold up uh, as we use uh, information that's closer and closer uh, to what exists in the real world. So that's where I am on this uh, right now. Uh, do I see any specific opportunities you know, uh, with uh, the uh, tremendous delegation uh, that's going to you know, the, uh, 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 the UN uh, for the TPNW? Uh, I don't know. It, uh, I don't see anything you know, uh, specific. You know, but you never know who you're going to run into, what conversations you have, and you know, where you might be able to find you know, you know, something that you can you know, grab onto to get to a better place. You know, so I'll be alert for that, you know, but I don't see anything specific. You know, so that's where I am right now, and you know, anybody who wants to know anything about it, you know, either talk now or email me. Thank you. You're welcome, and thank you. And I really trust your vision. Um, Ern, I really believe in your vision. Vision always propels the universe to help us. And I think we're at that point now. Not only will our brains work, but our universal system. There's something out there. If we're doing it right, it starts to work. Um, I can tell you stories of people who were at the last penny. And then somebody came in and said, act as if you have all the funding in the world. And pretty soon the funding followed their acts. So, Peter, I'm going to give you the last word, and I'm going to thank every one of you. I will be meeting again next Tuesday at 9 o'clock. So if we come up with something, Helen, when do you all go? John and Helen, when do you go to New York? Um, we leave um, Friday. Uh, um, starts. It ends on November, on December 1st. So November 27th to December 1st, something like that. Oh, that long week, you're going to be there the whole week. Yeah. To, okay, I'm looking at my calendar. Leaving on the Sunday night, coming back on the Friday. Well, that's cool. amazing. You're going to have some time there. Okay, Peter, thank oh, you. Ditto for me. I'll be in New York City from Sunday night through through Friday. Peter, um, are you coming? Are you in our delegation? Yes. Yay! You guys, you're going to be together. I feel like you're the mushroom that's about to make us all happy. You be together, think, keep thinking. Helen, I'm going to let you have the last word. I was going to let Peter, but it's your turn. Well, I just come back again to some real life examples, a proven track record, how critical that is to getting credibility um, with uh, senior people in larger situations. And um, my niece works for, what is the largest um, management consulting company in the US? I forgot the name of it. And she's dealing with these kinds of things. Pardon? Anyway, she's dealing, she's dealing with these kinds of problems all the time. She was telling me some of the things that she's been asked to work with. Maybe one of the consulting companies would be willing to try this out mm -hmm. as a as a shortcut um, and use it as a tool with a, a client who might be interested in the cost savings associated with it. Um, I also um, know that no, I, we have a couple of lawyers in this group, but our courts in Canada, we have a whole dispute resolution process, and it is awful. And uh, if you've been through it, the mediation on either side, and uh, yeah, yeah. So, and they're chock full. So, if we could go to um, find a law firm or some lawyers who would be willing to to try it out as a way of shortcutting or simplifying, and find some real, real life. I mean, the focus should be on some real life examples, disputes that this system has um, resolved in a win-win way for a fraction of the cost that it would have taken to go through people to do it. The part Barbara, that David Newman here. I'm going to have to rush, but I put two questions to Ernie directly uh, in person. Chat, I didn't know. Sorry. So about Ernie, please, please uh, check them out. And 
if you could answer those uh, for everybody, I, I sent them to you, but you've you've missed them. So, um, his uh, yeah, okay, uh, it receives conflict in a more peaceful, collaborative, and intelligent way throughout the world. Smart settle is a tool for negotiation and dispute resolution. No, no, no. I, I, I the first question was. Uh, the very sophisticated and malevolent parties are going to try and crack the system. So how do you give assurance to the, the players that this is going to have integrity? Uh, that's number one question. The other question really is uh, smart saddle is not new. I mean, they've, they've got clients. Uh, so there must be all kinds of testimonials and, and references. So why have to go through another simulation? Uh, get those uh, testimonials and references. So I put those questions to Ernie uh, and I ask him if he can answer those questions for all of us. So I'll just, uh, the second one first, uh, you know, we do have uh, a certain track record, but the um, cases that we've done uh, quite, quite a few, but they are smaller cases and most of them are uh, between individuals uh, we, we, you know, the, the biggest ones we've done are like um, estate divisions uh, with in, in the family areas. Uh, we've done uh, a, a lot of, uh, you know, mm, helping with family conflicts like separation agreements. And, uh, we, you know, those, those uh, conflicts are every bit as complicated, maybe even more than the big ones. Uh, so uh, we've... Uh, you know, especially when you get the the children involved, uh, they, and uh, and uh, so we've had some good good success there, where uh, parties have uh, you know started collaborating each with each other instead of fighting, and, and some of some of them get get back together. So uh, I think we've uh, proven it at at that level, uh, but. We don't have the track record with the much bigger ones that we're talking about today. So I don't know if we can make that big jump. We need something in between. As to your first question, uh, David, uh, how do you ensure that the sophisticated, untrustworthy party experts do not crack and manipulate the process? Okay, so I think I understand. Um, we have taken, gone to great... Uh, a great amount of effort and thought to prevent gaming of the situ uh, of the system. You're really talking about how do you are you how can you make sure the others aren't gaming the system? And uh, so we have underneath an algorithm that will normalize everything and. No matter how hard they might try, they can't manipulate the system uh, just from their own point of view. They can change, you know, their scale to this or to that, but the smart subtle infinity will actually normalize everything and mitigate uh, any of their efforts to try to game the situ the, the system. Um, so, so my question, Ernie, is is uh... Why can't you take this to the leading mediation people at the United Nations, get them to validate the system? Exactly. Uh, because this this is uh, of incredible value. Uh, well, and and if, 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 it, if it has the integrity and capacities, that you believe it does. Right. So that, that's exactly uh, why, why couldn't you even get an endorsement from one well, of the leading uh, uh, multinational uh, uh, Consulting companies in our world, or, or yeah. and 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 have them give an endorsement, test it out, give it an endorsement. You you need you need that kind of credibility to deal with the huge players we're talking. About. Even the small things count, Ernie. Don't negotiate uh, away the small things because small things are what people can take care of. Anyway, um, I'm going to end today with our uh, wonderful Peter. Peter, your last question, please. Thank you very much. My, for some reason, my hand keeps falling down. Um, my computer system. What the hell is going on here? Um, um, I, I just want to reinforce the point that Helen made. 
which is getting this out into a, some kind of public environment, whether it's a business issue or some smaller government issue or something like that. I think that the trials you've done are just the very logical ones uh, of doing it with personal disputes uh, of the, the kind you described. But now I would encourage you to tackle a public dispute and uh, find somebody. With respect to funding, uh, what a shame. I mean, this thing should get massive funding from some mm -hmm. um, wise um, oh, the peacemaker. philanthropist. Right. Yes, yes, yes. I'll think about that. I don't know any answers. Let's all think. You know, Ernie, I want to thank you. It's like night and day between our first meeting and this meeting. I have so much confidence in Smart Settle, and your um, PowerPoint was right on, and your um, simulation really was clear. So I want to thank you for that. It still is complicated, but the fact that there's neutrality makes me think it's doable because people need to feel that there's no bias and they need to trust the party. So with that, I want to thank each one of you. So let's go. I always end a meeting with everybody giving us a last word. And so Peter, what's your last word? Um, great. March on. Okay. Um, and be bold. Sandy? Oh, I look forward to just continuing to work with Ernie and yourself and to try to find who do we know who what wise philanthropists are out there that we could we could reach out to thank you barbara i just want to say that i have so much respect and admiration for ernie 30 years in the making barbara richard i've got all my faith in helen <laughs> okay <laughs> helen he's got all his faith in you and so do i helen I was just going to look up the name of the, my, I, I will ask my niece. She's doing really high level work in, um, on the West coast right now in the U S for this consulting company, really interesting work. And I will just, um, send her the links and just ask if she has any suggestions on where this could be tried, because again, I would not put time and resources into another simulation at all. I would put time and resources and focus into finding um, real world, real world, real world situations that are a step up from the family dispute situations that this could actually be done with. Thank you, Sergey. And thank you, thank you, Ernie. <laughs> hey, thanks, Alan. I'll be I'll be in touch with you. Well, you know, I don't know what to say, but I would like to see you again, guys. That you can help us. It's Marcel from Infinity. Thank you. Eric? Yeah, and I appreciate being here tonight. And I just, I just some more comments about Ernest's efforts in this grain deal, which I can talk to him privately about, some minor stuff not to evolve. But I, I see how it's evolved over time. Just, just like John German, I've seen how this project has moved forward, at least in different aspects, how he's improved his presentations to make it more... Yeah. Yeah. animated in detail, then it looks better. I still think the one thing I'm going to say, and this is what I saw amongst Ukrainians, uh, is I think there's a skepticism towards some uh, technology being involved, which they don't necessarily trust. I think that's part of the what I see a little bit of uh, Rotarians here on the ground in Ukraine. So uh, I can't speak to the Russian side and stuff like that. I don't know. And I've said it before. To, he knows I don't have contacts on the Russian side. Uh, I, my time has been in Ukraine, so. Well, but I appreciate you. his presentation, and I appreciate what he's doing, and I hope it moves forward. I think there's a lot of opportunities. I have an economics background, so I know his his ideas have ability to be played and put in different uh, positions and different uses beyond just small problems, domestic, maybe small uh, economic situations, or larger issues involving small conflicts too. So Dennis appreciate Long. this meeting. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Dennis. Last word. I think he's smiling at us. Um, Brenda? I'm very thankful, Ernie, for this. And I love the way your your presentation moves and all the, the way you've put it together. I love it. Thanks so much. John German? Thanks, Thanks Brenda. Yeah, for, uh, uh, Eric, um, I couldn't agree more about you know, the deep and abiding 
you know, suspicion and distrust of technology. Uh, then that's why I've been telling people, you can do most of this with the method without ever touching a computer, without ever invoking the tool. You know, and that's what will build confidence is going through the process. And for Helen, you, know, you just illustrated the most important thing for all of us to take away from this meeting, you know, which is talk to people because you never know who knows somebody and, and what that person or the person that person knows you know, what that person could do. So absolutely, please follow up uh, you know, with that consulting contact you know, and we should be alert at the UN all next week you know, that in every conversation, we might find another Helen you know, who has a relative or a friend you know, who, you know, who's in a position where they could do something for this. Thank you so much and thank you, Ernie. Thank you, John. And Dennis Wong? Be lucky. <laughs> right place, right time. And hopefully it works. Yeah, Ernst, your last word, Ernst. Oh, it's been a, a real honor uh, to be here among all of you. Thanks for inviting me to do this, Barbara. Well, it's, um, I want to tell you the little history. You know, I had gotten all your emails, but I didn't have time to open them up and discover what I was supposed to do. Then Sandy called me. The power of a phone call, the power of a human voice saying, and here's what Sandy said, drop everything and do smart settle. That's the only thing that's going to save our world. He didn't say it like, I hope you like this, Barbara. He just said, drop everything. This is the only thing that's going to save our planet. Well, that's conviction. And I know Sandy, he doesn't say things lightly. And when he said it with enthusiasm, I said, okay, bring it on. And here we are. So Ernst, you're going to get the last word. And I will be meeting next me next Tuesday at nine. If you want to join us, do it on the same Zoom. If you're in New York, we're going to be praying for you. I'd have a moment of silence to make sure that you're getting the right contacts. Ernst, your last word, please. Well, uh, I just uh, am humbled by all the enthusiasm here. And thank you very much. It was uh, good, great to present to you, you know, an enthusiastic audience just encourages me well you don't need much encouragement now you've got it kiddo and we're very pleased to see the, your your dynamic way you're doing last meeting what did you say sandy you learned you have to learn to be dynamic now you're dynamic now we have to learn to get the people to give us the money to help you get this thing going and we're going to save our planet and that's where the universe comes in right david wick the universe always comes in and it helps i've every time i have this bigger than possible solution no bigger than possible dream i mean dream big don't dream little piddly old things dream big the bigger the dream the more work the universe has to do and that's when they come true so we have a big dream here that smart settle would become the key to all negotiations so that we will have a world that is fair and i loved your words fair and efficient efficient that's another important word i've been through negotiations i know all about inefficiency because it's just the way life is. It, it's easier to get away with something that doesn't work than to really keep at it and make it work. So with that, and I look at, I just love the picture behind you, Brenda. Is that your family? That picture behind us is why we're doing this. Beautiful picture. Oh, bless you. All right, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. If you're in the United States, I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Helen and I are working hard to get into War 101. And I'm going to bless all of you and may this day bring us the solutions that we need to keep our world sane and efficient. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>